Hey, it's Vaz here from Metro Hobbies, and of course, spring is just around the corner, which means summer is not too far away, and a lot of us are gonna be wanting to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. And what better way to do it than by the lake with one of the fastest boats that we sell here at the shop, the Pro Boat Miss Geico. Okay, so once you unbox your boat, which comes really well packed in the box, by the way, with a bunch of foam and everything else, uh, you're going to find a few different things, and it's really important that you sort of pay attention to some of this stuff. Now, the stand that you see the boat on actually doesn't come in the box, it's inside the boat itself in the battery trays. And in those battery trays, there's also these little bits of foam that you can stick down um, on the battery tray itself, uh, just to stop the batteries from sort of sliding around and so forth, so you can stick that down. Uh, of course, you are going to get some manuals and some paperwork and, and uh, your radio over here, which we'll talk about in a second. So you're going to see this uh, big sort of stop sign going on here. And behind that is uh, some cables. Now, um, <clears throat> Horizon Hobby actually have a video on YouTube explaining how these cables are meant to be used and how they're not meant to be used. We'll link to that in the video description as well so you can have a look at it. But essentially, this is a series connector that allows you to power up both of the motors in the boat. And we'll talk about that again in a little while because this is not a single motor boat. It has two, two motors and two speed controllers. Um, so that's what this is, is. It allows you to run two 3ES batteries and then it splits that power up back to uh, the two ESCs that you're gonna be plugging into. Alternatively, you can also run two 6S batteries connected directly to the ESC. So you don't actually use this connector if you're gonna be running two 6S packs, or you can even run two 4S packs as well. Uh, but when you are running two 2S or two 3S, you use this connector so that you're, you're either running 4S or 6S on the boat. Um, so again, there'll be a uh, video link in the video description that um, Horizon Hobby did a little while ago, and it, they explain it a little bit more detail. This is just a brief explanation, but it is advised that you sort of watch that video if you're not familiar with how this is supposed to be powered up, um, and of course, pay attention to all the instructions and everything else, because they do actually show you in the instructions how to connect batteries up in the boat. Now, the manual and uh, all these other little goodies that you're gonna see in here, we'll quickly take this out and we'll go through all of these bits and bobs so that we know exactly what we're getting. So I'll empty everything out. And uh, one of the first things here is the antenna tube. So this actually goes on here. You don't necessarily need to have the full length of the antenna, but for the longest range, yeah, you'd probably have it the, the uh, actual wire of the antenna pulled all the way out and then have this uh, tube in its place. Uh, you also got some uh, stickers here, which is always good. You can decorate the boat, your toolbox, your fridge, wherever you'd like to put those. Uh, there's also a Horizon Hobby uh, sort of swag, little information regarding you know their website and all that sort of thing. There's a, a, a bind plug that you may or may not need. Uh, traditionally, these uh, sort of RCs come already pre-bound to the boat, but if you do need to rebind it for whatever reason, they give you the bind plug for you to be able to do that. And now, of course, the manual. Now, I will say that I have joked about in the past, you know, this is like a little bit about bedtime reading and so forth, but when you get to this sort of level on the boat, um, you'd sort of hope that most people would already be pretty familiar with the maintenance schedules um, and how to power this up and how to work on the boat and look after it and when to use it, how to use it and all that sort of thing. But if you are still relatively new and you are getting something that is this serious and this fast, uh, speaking of fast, this thing can hit upwards of about 70 miles an hour on the water. So we're talking about 130, 140 kilometers an hour on the water potentially. So it's a very quick boat uh, for its maximum speed. So I do advise, highly recommend that you read this manual. Uh, you may not need to study it. Uh, there's not gonna be like an exam at the back of it or anything like that that you need to go for, but uh, it is important that you do go through some of this uh, and familiarize yourself with all the maintenance schedules uh, for this boat, how to power it up, um, all the battery orientations for best performance and handling, depending on water conditions and wind conditions and so forth. Uh, it's really important that you do go through this and have a, a bit of an understanding uh, of what you need to do before you actually run this boat. Because if you do mess it up, uh, this is an expensive boat, it's not a cheap boat. Um, and uh, of course it's very fast, so you, you wanna make sure you know what you're doing. 
Now, last thing, of course, is the radio. This is the DX2E. Uh, I'm actually surprised that these boats still come with this radio, but it is a fairly decent radio. A lot of the more modern um, Horizon Hobby products now come with a DX3. Uh, so I presume that uh, in some time in the future, this might actually come with a DX3 as well. Uh, but this, you know, for the longest time, this was actually a very good radio. Uh, it has plenty of range. There's no like collapsible antennas or anything like that for you to break off. Uh, you have your, um, uh, there's a throttle uh, limiter over here, I believe. Uh, this very top switch just there is a throttle limiter, so you have a, a low, medium, and high. So I suppose if you are um, fairly new to this sort of speed and this sort of scale of boat, you can drop it down to like 50% power and then slowly work your way up as you familiarize yourself with the boat. Uh, there is also an auxiliary switch up here, which is really not in use. You got your reverse switches back here for throttle and uh, steering. Uh, you have a, a steering trim and a throttle trim over here. You have your on and off switch. There's a little bind button back here as well. And then you have your steering dual rate little knob right at the front. Uh, of course, steering wheel there, throttle, runs on four double A's. Neat little radio. I've got a couple of these myself. They work fantastic. Shouldn't give you any problems at all. All right, so now for the main event, of course, which is the 36-inch Miss Geico. So as I said, this is a twin power system boat, and as you can see, it is a catamaran style boat. So I'll flip this up real quick, and you'll have a look at it underneath, and you'll see that there'll be two little holes underneath here. Now these are actually your water pickups. So as you're running the boat, the water gets picked up from here and it gets pressurized, which then goes through your motor, your ESC and everything, and then spits out from the top of the boat, you'll see two little uh, black holes. There'll be one on this side and there'll be one on this side here next to the antenna. And that's essentially where the uh, water comes out of. So as you're running the boat, you'll see like a little bit of water coming out through there. Uh, on the back here, of course, you'll see the twin propellers uh, and of course the single rudder, which uses, uh, which is pretty well reinforced as well, by the way, can I add, uh, which has a pull-pull system on a steering servo, which we'll talk about in a little while. Uh, now these propellers of course come with aluminium props already on there. Uh, just make sure that these are obviously all very nice and tight and keep your hands away from those because they will chop you up if you're not careful. All right, so taking the canopy off is pretty simple. There are four little twisty tabs here. You just undo these little screws and uh, the whole thing's like foam sealed as well. So it's pretty hard for water to get in but they always recommend that you do tape up the hatch. Um, so that there's you know very little chance of water getting in there. As you can see, everything is a uh, fiberglass molded. So this is not a plastic hull. This is a high quality unit that we, we're talking about here. Uh, very nicely painted and everything else. And then as you look inside, uh, it looks a little bit complicated and everything, but really when you break it down, it really isn't. So it can be a bit overwhelming when you first lay eyes on it, uh, but it's really not. Uh, so essentially, we've got our pull-pull system that I was talking about earlier with the steering servo. So this allows the rudder uh, uh, to move, and of course you can steer the boat that way. Over on this side, we have our receiver, uh, which is just tucked away back here. There are a, a bunch of additional connectors and so forth um, that are on there. You don't really need to worry too much about those for the time being. You've got on and off switches over here for your speed controllers, so your speed controllers are those in the middle just there and then of course you've got your two ic5 connectors uh just there with also which also have some cap packs already wired onto the main cables for both of those escs um, now ec5 connectors will work uh, quite easily with these as well so you don't necessarily need to use spectrum batteries if you if you uh, don't want to uh, you can use any type of battery as long as it has an ec5 or an ic5 connector it'll plug straight in there Moving on to the middle here, we've got the very large and generous battery trays. There are three battery straps to hold these batteries in place. And of course you can go all the way forward uh, with the batteries as well. And there's illustrations in the manual showing how far forward you can go. But I think the batteries can go all the way up to about here as long as they can fit underneath the hatch, which is uh, quite cool. And then of course you've got your two big motors on either side powering those big propellers that are on there. Uh, there is some foam you'll see that looks like pool noodles inside the actual hull itself. Don't remove those, they, they are there for buoyancy, uh, so make sure that you leave those in there. Uh, you can probably cut them up a little bit if you, uh, there is an illustration of you know, putting batteries on either side of the, uh, of the hull there if you want to, but um, I would definitely leave those in there for buoyancy in case you have a rollover or something like that. 
helps keep the boat afloat. Uh, so you'll see all these hoses and everything that goes on in here as well. Uh, when you are running this boat or after every run, make sure that there's nothing clogging up those hoses. Uh, obviously, if you're going to be running in lakes and, and things like that, you might get little grass and, and you know, debris sort of getting up in through the, uh, the water pickups. Uh, so make sure that those are actually clean and, and so forth so that you have constant cooling going through those electrics because unlike an RC vehicle like a car or, or an aeroplane where you can get normal airflow going through the electrics, well here everything has to be sealed because it needs to be watertight. So the only thing keeping these electrics cool is the water. And if uh, those uh, hoses are blocked in any way, well then your electrics are going to be overheating. So you have to make sure that all of that is running as it should. And that pretty much sums up uh, you know, the internals of this boat and the Miss Geico in general. Uh, as I said, there are videos online from Horizon Hobby that explain, you know, the setup of the batteries and so forth for you to uh, power this thing up correctly. Uh, and of course, the instructions do give you a lot of information as well if you want to read through that. Uh, alternatively, you are free to email us or call us at any time. And we're more than happy to help you out and uh, guide you through setting this guy up to make sure that you go out there and have the best fun that you can have without any issues. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video on the Pro Boat Miss Geico. Now, this is a fantastic boat. As you can see, it's actually quite big, and I've had the pleasure of actually driving one of these in the previous version, when it used to be the uh, Pro Boat Zelos. Uh, a friend of mine actually had one of these, and uh, it was an incredible experience to uh, have a boat that's sitting dead on the water, and you punch that throttle, and it literally bunny hops out of the water. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to see, and of course, uh, being able to clock triple figures uh, in a very short amount of space uh, is, is definitely, uh, if, get your heart pumping a little bit. It's very exhilarating, and uh, I, you know, the whole time I had a big smile on my face. So if you do want to get serious about your boating experience uh, and go out there and have some fun, uh, the uh, Pro Boat Miss Keiko is definitely one to check out um, if you want the, the biggest and baddest that you've got out there. So. Uh, that is it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as, uh, if you're new. And as always, check out the video description. We'll have links in there to everything that is uh, uh, Miss Geico related. Uh, and of course, you're always free to uh, give us a call here at the shop if you have any further questions. Thank you again, and I'll speak to you all next time. This is the Miss Geico. It's a huge boat. It's bring, start again. And uh, what better way to introduce boating uh, then, no, that's just all wrong. Where's the... I suppose you just have a standard burrito. They only have like two choices. Can you just pause for a sec? Just stop for a second. With one of the fastest boats that we sell here on... Uh, ah, damn it, I always had it.